All right, everybody, we are all set to do some cage match here. Uh, is the sound okay before we jump in? Are we too loud, or is it good? All right. Do I sound amazing? Because I do. So, thank you, see? That's right. Yeah. People know I'm pretty. Yeah, right. It's the haircut. I'm, I have a voice for, I have a face for podcasting. Yes, you do. Uh, okay, so here's how this game works. For those of you that have no idea, uh, it's not a game. There's no winner. There's no loser. We're the winners, and you're the losers, I guess. No, that doesn't work. Uh, so what we do is we pair things up. We match them up. You guys, as the panelists, have a card that says A and B on it. And you, I will say A or B for whatever the subject is, and you will hold it up. And then I'll pick two of you to kind of debate it out. Okay? And then you as the audience... We love audience participation. So booing is encouraged. Uh, yelling things out is encouraged. Let's have fun with this. And I wrote down a few cage match ideas real quickly. We don't have to do any of these. If you have a good one, shout it out. And if I like it, we're going to do it. Already? We haven't even started. All right, what is it? That's a good one. All right. First one up, Namor versus... Oh, wait. How dare you? We haven't started yet. <laughs> we have to introduce everybody. We got a lot of people up here. Uh, and I am really interested in how you guys all got in this configuration. Was there any grease involved or... We are slender people. <laughs> We're never getting out. We're here forever. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The people in between us. Chris and Alilla look like Italian. bookends here. <laughs> Good looking bookends. All right, so let's let's start on that end. Uh, my name is Alil Kanitza, and I do the League of Geeks podcast. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's geeks with a Z, cause we're hip hop. Yeah, and he also is on the Nuff Said podcast, which is the Marvel Agents of Shield podcast on our network, and uh, he takes a lot of abuse there. Good job, bro. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And next to you? I am Devin Delaney. I am a general geek, and I'm also a composer and music supervisor and all that fun stuff at a company called Noise Floor. And other than that, I hang out with these awesome geeky people and debate things. Z with a Z. Z or um, Noise Floor with, with a Z. with a nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's silent, but you just, just buy in. It's going to work. Yeah. No, I got gotcha. you. Hey, Chris, so was that. It was silent. Uh, you look like a supervillain. Okay, let's move ahead. <laughs> this is true. Unintentional. That's a Cosplay. terrible ball joke. How do you? Boo. Yes. All right. um, I didn't do it about you. I'm Blair Knight Graves. I am the director of social media and the associate uh, editor at tvbinges.com. And I host three podcasts currently on the Southgate Media Group Network. I host Monroe's Comfy Sweater, which is a grim podcast, if you like grim. Uh, the 12 Monkeys podcast and the Strain podcast. The strain is coming back this summer. So, yes, it is. Uh, Woo! Well, we're coming back for season two. We hope you'll come and listen. All right. Next up. <laughs> Hi, I'm We started Carly. early because there's so many people up here. Go ahead, Carly. Um, I'm Carly. I'm a writer and editor at the630.com, and I'm also the resident geek um, there because nobody else is as obsessed with movies and TV as I am. They have lives. Um, and uh, I, I am just getting into podcasting because of these beautiful people. So, it's it's awesome. talking about me. Yeah, I'm beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yes. It's a beautiful person. <laughs> Moving right ahead. <clears throat> Does that look like Beetlejuice to you? Beetlejuice? The stand. Oh yeah, this right here. Oh, it does. Yeah. It um, hi, I'm Mike. Unpronounceable surname. Uh, I'm a regular human, but uh, I do a lot of costume commission art stuff like that. Um, when I'm not asleep, I also do occasional podcasts for Southgate, um, uh, PodQuest, the D&D podcast. Uh, I used to work on 80s Reboot, Overdrive, Tail Weaver, and um, Indie Game. So. And he's been napping a lot lately, so you'll be harassed later. Uh, moving right ahead. Oh, the sandworm from uh, Beetlejuice just attacked you. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Gordon Demowski. Holy cow! And, and when I'm not knocking down mics or holding them too close to my face, uh, I'm a writer blogger. I write for ComicRelated.com. I also co-host the Zone 4 podcast through Comic Related, where we talk about comics, TV, movies, and bacon, though not necessarily in that order. Yes, Sweet. bacon. 
Bacon. And, and I'm also on the board of Chicago Nerd Social Club. All right. Bacon. Hi, guys, I'm Chris Mao, owner of Blue Box Cafe uh, in Elgin, Illinois, and co-host of This Week in Geek and Counterculture Podcast. Well, that's it for this evening. That was so long. No, I'm kidding. Uh, all right, let's get to this. I want to hear this first one. Namor versus Aquaman. And these are we debated out, okay? But that doesn't mean I'm not going to turn it on its ear and have people fight it out. But not these guys. Namor or Aquaman? Who's Namor? A is Namor. B is Aquaman. All right. It is Alil and Lex. <laughs> Super villain. I'll, I'll let you go, Lex. I don't have a very solid argument for this, All other right. than Jason Momoa is playing Aquaman. That's a positive thing. He in uh, yeah, Aquaman has some very solid qualities. I liked his representation in uh, Injustice. Like it finally gave Aquaman some like kind of badass qualities and all that. Like he controls the sea. There's a lot more sea than land. It's a good thing. He's got a cool suit. That's compelling. Na- Namor is Namor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, uh, you know what? It's funny because these characters are, in, in a sense, very similar and yet very different. Gordon, you can um, jump in there. Don't be afraid. Yeah, interrupt. Well, all I was about. about to say, uh, Aquaman may have earned, finally earned respect, but Namor demands it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's a really good argument. There you go. I'm going to go with that. Okay. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm a Marvel fanboy, so Marvel. Okay. <laughs> I'm also kind of metagaming here a little bit, but I, I have to say that the old Namor comics with Jay Lee doing the artwork, yeah. Really, oh, yeah. that made me, they gave me feels, and it was very, like, like the edges were very scratchy, but yeah. very angular, and he, it just sort of added to that, like, regal, but tortured, you know, character to him. Cool. So that always gave me the Namor. And, over and, who, and, and who came first? Who came first? Yeah. Namor. Namor, the, the Namor came first. Yeah. DC cheated, stole. Ooh, <laughs> take that, DC. <laughs> All right, so audience, what is it? We're going to say Namor or Aquaman. Clap if it's Namor. Yeah. How about Aquaman? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, okay, people who clap for Aquaman. Hey, Rob. Fr- frankly, Leave. just now. I don't know if more people clap for Aquaman, but you were so loud. <laughs> I gave a very bad argument, but they were very enthusiastic. Well, so, like so I'm going to call it a draw because I think it, it's that DC versus Marvel line. So there we go. Which brings us... It's, it's, it's Jason Momoa, that's what it is. Yeah, Jason Momoa is... Paul Drogo. Paul Drogo. Cool. Paul Drogo. <laughs> um, okay. Terrible jokes. This is one I want to hear because I want to hear what somebody thinks. And I might have to explain who it is, but once I do, you guys will be down. Yes. Already, I have broken the game. Warwick Davis. Yeah. Yes. Willow versus Ed Gale. Anyone know who Ed How Gale is? Howard the Duck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Battle of I'm the saying? Little People. See what I'm saying? Ed Gale versus Warwick Davis. A is Ed Gale. B is Warwick Davis. This is, this is tough. This is an Ewok versus yeah, Howard the Duck. Everyone's going to be doing it. <laughs> All right. And Howard the yeah, Duck is the raunchiest movie you two crazy kids. Yeah, great. You can't, you can't put the card up and not do it. And you're Chris Mao. You have something to say. I do have something, I do have something to say. He played an Ewok. That's, that's enough for him not to win. Not to win. <laughs> not to win. Not to win. Franchise that's, that's horrible. Also, also, keep in mind, Warwick Davis... Wasn't Doctor Who? Oh yeah. A Neil Gaiman written episode of Doctor right. Who. Ed Gale, not so much. Right. No. But Willow exists. You can't, you can't overcome an Ewok with a zipper up the back. That's all I have to. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Ed Gale was Ed, little man in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. Who cares? I do. But but his <laughs> awesomeness. Yeah. But Howard the Duck the worked really? at the cheap Sybaris. And what? <laughs> In the movie, he worked at the Sybaris. <laughs> it was the worst thing I had my kids watch, believe me. I, I why did you... And you it was Howard the kid, Duck, I forgot. You've had your kids watch terrible things, Alil. Does anyone have DCFS on speed dial for Alil's... Fa- Never mind, we'll do that later. So, okay, is everyone... Has got, have you gotten it out? Warwick Davis versus Ed? Okay, audience. Ed Gale? Howard the Duck. 
Ed Gale. Let's hear applause for Ted Gale. Thank you. <laughs> I'm yeah, with you. Advocate. Warwick Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Give love to Willow. Okay, Willow. wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm already breaking Val the Val Kilmer and Willow or Val Kilmer as Batman? Oh, oh Willow. We all lose. Wait, Matt Martin. Martin. We all lose. I'm going to break the game. Is that a question? I'm going to break the game. No, wait. I'm going to break it. Ed Gale and Warwick Davis are in a cage fighting to the death. Who wins? We all do. We all <laughs> win. Everybody <laughs> wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please we all make win. that happen. All right. Does anyone have a cage match stop? or do I have to throw another one out here? Another genius one. Okay. Jay and Silent Bob as a team versus Bill and Ted, which is the stronger oh. two for That's right. That's right. Uh, okay. A is Jay and Silent Bob. B is Bill and Ted. This is like Sophie's Choice. All right. I know. Kari. And Blair. Wait, they're together. They're both. You just argued for uh, Bill and Ted. I know. It was more of a silent argument. Just hold them close to my heart. Was, Kari, was yours not good? Did you want to grab the other microphone? What? Okay, you you go. Okay, uh, Jay and Silent Bob were in Dogma, and Dogma was like one of the, my favorite stories ever. Dogma is just like, oh, angels and all that, and like demons and all that stuff, and the world is ending, and it turns out that God is Alanis Morissette, and Jay and Silent Bob help save the world. It's awesome. You can't argue. <laughs> if only. Here, here's a tough clincher, though. George Carlin. Both franchises. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Who is the stronger George Carlin argument? Rufus Time or the Lord guy yeah. hitchhiking? Or Which the one? Yes. Or the Cardinal? Guy, guy, or Cardinal hit, right? no, no, guy hitchhiking because yeah, right. he got around. Uh, you remember what I mean. <laughs> That's right. so I, he did Massage Twister, right, Edward? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's only five. Come on. He's only five. Oh, I, man. I, I right. will say, I Was this the argument? Well, I don't know. I didn't see the first franchise that you There's only one the dogma. There, I don't understand. Yeah, but uh, there, I didn't see that. But I, I'll say I like Bill and Ted. It's basically Stoner Doctor Who, which I think is hilarious. So, I mean... Stoner you, Doctor Who. You just made my life. <laughs> I never looked at it that way. Wow. Okay, but, but when it comes to Bill and Ted, let's all talk about the elephant in the room and why I cannot endorse this. Keanu Reeves. Good Keanu Reeves. Uh, there's no such thing. Uh, John Wick. John Wick. Hold on. Hold on. Hi, I'm Shana. Uh, I so strongly feel Bill and Ted is the winner of this argument. Uh, first of all, uh, Jay and Silent Bob didn't save shit. Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted brought order to the universe. Um, they escaped from hell. They made friends with the devil. Uh, they were out. For, they were out for way more good throughout it than than Jay and Silent Bob. Also, also my my final my big argument. Has anybody here seen uh, Jay and Silent Bob's cartoon movie? Yes. yes. So if you've seen that, you know why Bill and Ted should win this. Cause, <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna give the the uh, Jay and Silent Bob a boost though because they were on an episode of Degrassi. That adds bonus points. I'm not saying it wins. It adds bonus points. Bill and, Bill and Ted are going to Mars. That that was confirmed that they are doing. Oh, that. in three? They are doing that. They are doing that. Yeah. Why didn't you say this on this week in Geek? <laughs> what is wrong with you? See, they're getting another one. They have to ago. win. No, no, they've been talking about this for ages. D did anyone else know that they were going to Mars? It's, it's Mars or the no. moon or something. Wherever they were going to go. With okay, Mars and the moon. Too drastic. Wait. I may, be wrong. I may be wrong. I'm trying to remember. It's California. That's not that exciting. Hold on, hold on. No, I remember the plot line. The plot line for the next movie, I believe, is the fact that they haven't brought peace to the world yet, and they need to figure out why. That's the plot line of the next movie. I'm telling you, look it up. This is confirmed. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm down with it, man. They're also doing... Mar Words marked. They're also doing um, Jane Silent Bab or Bab are back with uh, 
They're back with uh, Mallrats 2 and uh, Mar- whatever the other Mar- one is. Clerks 3. Clerks 3, yeah. and yeah. I'm sure they'll be I mean, Jay and Silent Bob 2. I love Kevin Smith. So, like, Kevin Smith's one of my favorite directors. That's why I'm all about okay. the, the Jay and Silent Bob. It's like. All right, audience. We're going, yeah, Freaked? Yes. Oh. With the bearded lady and Mr. T is the bearded lady. Nice. That's awesomeness. All right. Let's, and Randy Quaid's in that, and he is sane. Yeah, he is. <laughs> All right. Audience, let's hear it. Bill and Ted. Yeah. Jay and Silent Bob. Whoa. Wow, Whoa. I did not expect Whoa. that. Ted? You lose. Yeah. You're going to have to leave now. Wow, that was awesome. So Bill and Ted win. Was it her argument, or was it just that they win? They win. They win. Hey. Yep. But what if they show... You win. You lose. <laughs> what if... What if Jay and Silent Bob show up in Bill and Ted? Ooh. Then it's a win. Then the doctor and shows Ed up. Gale is in it. <laughs> as yes. long as everyone is excellent to each other, everyone wins. I think Again. Stoner Doctor Who is what really won <laughs> yeah. there, because my mind is exploding now. Um, okay. We're going to go a little bit old school on this one. You like that? I'm um, very hip. Uh, Pee Wee Herman. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Bad blood on Pee Wee, huh? Versus yeah, Mr. Rogers. Oh. In a cage to the death. No, let's start with Pee Wee versus Mr. Rogers. A is Pee Wee. B is Mr. Rogers. This is Sophie's choice. A is... <laughs> This is Sophie's Wait, choice. What? A is Mr. Rogers. B is no. A is Pee Wee. B is Mr. Rogers. A is Pee Wee. B. It's all B. Pee Wee wins. No, 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 Mr. Rogers wins. Okay, now wait. We put him in a cage, and they fight to the death. Mr. Rogers was. Mr. Rogers. He was throws a shoe at him, but it's just like. <laughs> Nothing. He, he was a ninja. Yes, he was. Yeah. Did no, you see him was. take his shoes off? He was. A, he was a, no, he, he was, was actually really, special forces yeah, or something. Yeah, he was. In real a, life. Yeah. He's he plus, plus his card. His card. He's got the magic cardigan. Yeah. 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 Pee Wee was not he special would just forces. Pee Wee with a cardigan. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Here comes the joke. Bike. Here comes okay. the joke. He's got cherry. Pee Wee owned a dry cleaner. Anyone that knows that joke. Okay. Enjoy that. Thank I you. Think Mr. Rogers would just, Mr. Rogers, <laughs> this first is a of family all, show. <laughs> this is one thing I did not know I would have strong opinions on, and I very much do. I want to hear think it. I that, like, Pee Wee's craziness would, like, because, I mean, I think that would be, like, it would make it intense, but I think Mr. Rogers would just, like, in a very chill way, yeah. would just smother Pee Wee with his cardigan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Smother him with his cardigan. Although, what if Pee Wee's able to use the secret word? Like, is that, like, a thing? If the secret word is just could, rage or power. rampage, okay. and the chair comes and just destroys Mr. Rogers, yes. like, Mr. you know what the secret wins. word is. Mr. Rogers is covered Cherry. in tattoos. He's, like, you know he's, like, he's seen some stuff. He's seen some stuff. Mr. Plus, Rogers takes his shirt off. It looks like the Joker's tattoos all over. <laughs> Plus, he wipes Mr. Rogers is disturbed. a friend to Good King Friday who has a tiger. They would jump in and kick Pee-wee's butt. He's got you prison know it's going to be a throwdown. He's got prison tats on his fingers. They say trolley life. <laughs> that was so going to be my went. question. Are they allowed this to have their little a dark menagerie place. with them? <laughs> All right, we're going to ask the expert. The audience doesn't get to vote. Sorry, audience. Sorry, you guys. You guys already said, Mr. Rogers, Molly, you're eight. <laughs> Who wins? <laughs> Pee Wee Herman wins, according to the eight-year-old. When she is the last time you right. saw that? Crack addict show that thing is crazy. We've been we've been binging the heck out of that thing at home. It's yeah, awesome. but but you just said she's eight years old. She has time for her taste to develop. You know what? I would not challenge her taste. She yeah, no, she knows it. Yeah, she'll kick your butt. yeah, here's what she's reading right now: the graphic novel for A Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. That's right. Do not challenge that kid. Okay, I got another one. I, I know who's going to light up on this one. I'm looking in your direction there, Purple. Agent Starling. Everyone knows who that is, right? Not Starling City, Agent Starling versus Agent Scully. Yep. Somebody's going to have an opinion. Okay, Agent Starling. Might be you. Is it that one? Somebody's feedback. I think it was, I think it's 
Blair exploding with energy over this one. All right, A is Agent Starling, B is Agent Scully. All right, Gordon Blair. And a little, you lose. You're still, he's like, Pee Wee. All right. I'm going to let Gordon go first. No, you go first. No, no, you Gordon, go. you go first. You go first. You, well, you, he can use that mic. You can use that mic. Wait, wait, go at the same time. No. You're so Agent polite. May. I wouldn't Agent be polite. Uh, okay, I'm or Agent right here. May. I have to be right here. Okay. Um, yes. So there's just, there's like nobody better in the, I, like this is a terrible argument, but there's nobody better than Agent Scully. Like Jillian Anderson embodied that character entirely and she saw a bunch of stuff and she took her time to believe in it. And then she repeatedly saved the world from a horrible government that we don't know about. And like she found out all the conspiracy theories and she helped resolve them. And there was that weird thing that happened with the priest in the second movie that we don't have to talk about. But, <laughs> but like Agent Scully was just, she was smart, she was tactful, and yet she was unwavering in her beliefs. She was. She... I knew you'd have a full on argument for this one, <laughs> Gordon. Um, she just gave all my reasons why I prefer Agent Starling. Really? So. Are you conceding, or are you saying it's the same argument? It's the same argument. Interesting. All right. Anyone else have anything to say? You guys are very quiet on this subject. No? I mean, I think you could just go by general, like, Scully's had a lot more time to develop her. I know. But Scully's had a lot yeah, more time. it's a microphone, time. Devin. You want to it, talk it, into it. Okay. You think I know at this point, I think right? you would. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to say the sample size we have with Scully is pretty impressive. You have 10 seasons She is kind of, of a sample her. size. She's very short. Yeah. yeah. Agent Carter. She's doing her right on Hannibal, oh, too. Oh, so. oh, wait a minute. Or Agent Carter. Agent Carter. Oh, <laughs> Agent Carter. Marvel. <laughs> Throw, give us your argument for Agent Carter. If it's just Marvel, you lose. Come on, she, she, she fought the Nazis. That's it. And she's Captain America's and she won. girlfriend. Scully fought so the fun. aliens. And the Nazis. ghosts. Nazis. And like the zombies. Yep. And, and okay, the Agent Carter and, like, not only fought the Nazis, she and did Hydra. it with and Hydra. She did it with Captain America and without, and without him, and with and without the Howling Commandos. Yep. Dude, and, Scully and had she Mulder, could, and she she beat. <laughs> and she's still like David. Tore and up. she beat a highly trained Russian assassin. So I gotta go with Agent Carter on this one. Agent Carter. And we wow. all know that the Nazis are working with the ghosts and the aliens, so you gotta add that in too. That's right. <laughs> all right, so now we go and to the Scully audience. Beat them. We go to the audience. This I is a three way. Scully beat everyone. Scully beat everyone. Got, oh, wait, you got something. Oh, yeah. Um, the whole thing about Agent Carter, that was brand new. But I was coming up here because Starling and Mulder were trained as psychologists at Quantico at Quantico to be profilers so I'm like Starling and Mulder would be more equal than <laughs> Scully Scully had that science background that is true true, true. That is true. Go sit down. Who wore it? <laughs> All right, exactly. That's the better argument. Who wore it better? Who wore it better? You did, a little. All right, audience. Scully can always run in heels. Audience, it's a three-way question here, so hold your applause until you know which one you're going to do. I already forgot who we're doing. Uh, Agent Starling? Ooh. Right. Okay. Agent Scully? <laughs> Agent Carter. Yeah. yeah! Or Kolchak. You know what? Clearly Scully won that yes. one, but clearly Agent Carter won. A Agent Carter <laughs> wins. He fought uh, now wait. Bonus question. Agent Starling versus Agent Mulder. I'm just going to ask the audience, and you guys can vote, obviously. Agent Starling as a profiler from Quantico, blah, blah, blah. Agent Starling? Agent Mulder. A smattering of applause. Nobody wow. cared about that question. Yeah, no one cared. All right. <laughs> Martha, we'll revote for Mulder. You know what? You missed your, your opportunity there. Okay, we're moving on to the next one. We can't edit a live podcast. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we move into music. We have a new category. We've never done music on here before. Is, is it hip hop? No. And I know we're going to get strong opinions from some of you, and some of you are going to go, huh? No, you guys will probably all know. And I think all of you will know, except you, eight-year-old. Tenacious D. Oh. 
Now, was that negative? No, that's oh, amazing. No, 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 that's, you think it automatically wins. You think it automatically wins with Tenacious D. What about Flight of the Concords? Oh, no. no. Loudy here went Flight of the Concords. A is the D. I can't. B is the Concord. Wow. Um, you? Do you want? Wait, what are you? B? You want somebody else? You? No, music guy. Music guy. Devin and Mike. And you can chime in. So, everybody can chime in. Go. Go. So, who, wait, who's... I'm you can D, go first. Who else you're, you're Tenacious D. I'm going Flight of Concords. Go. All right, it's a very hard argument. Tenacious D and Jack Black and Kyle Gass hold the beautiful, beautiful lineage. They set the testimony for all... Like, they, they, they created that template. True story. But I'm going to go Concords based on musical versatility. Like, oh. their ability to parody a lot of different music is kind of only second to Weird Al or something like that. They can dip into hip-hop and indie and make fun of all that for what it is. But Tenacious D just has this kitschy metal, like, folk it's, opera thing going on. And it's awesome, but I feel Concords is a little more I'll, uh, I'll wide give, of a berth. I'll give it to you on the versatility, but I can't give it to you because they have, like, their own self-mythology that they raised themselves out of the muck and made themselves into rock gods. Every single instance of every song that they've ever done ends with them being like kings or gods or like lords. There's a throne somewhere. There's probably skulls, things like that. It's very intriguing by with itself, Satan. though. I gotta. They, they, they beat Satan. They worked with well, him. Well, in that their exactly. best song is about writing a song right. that you can never hear. Like, the level of meta right there is just beautiful. Also, yeah, Concords have, like, their smarm level is a little too high for me. Jack Black is not smarmy. No, 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 oh no, my no. God. no, 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 no. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing, though. The, the smarm is, like, directed at themselves a lot of the time. And I enjoy the whole self-defeating, although it's like a weird dichotomy of like, we're mythological and awesome, but we're also total losers. And they're like hitting that line. And, and I have to say that Flight of the Concords, unless they do a song, write a song that is as beautiful and as perfect as Wonder Boy, they will never reach the heights of Tenacious D. Yep. Yep. I, I will say that the Flight of the Concords rocked the elevator. That's enough. I mean, and yeah. they came up with Rhyme Nazareth. That was a, that was a fantastic li yeah. little skit. So yeah. I can't say what Tenacious D did because it's inappropriate. <laughs> but there's so many amazing inappropriate. No matter what, no matter uh, just what remember I remember the gently song. So just remember uh, push-ups and how you can do that. <laughs> yeah. No matter what I would have wanted to vote. I mean, for, if you do push-ups like that, you win. Tenacious D. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, am I allowed to say I've been convinced? You have. Like no, I mean, I it just. And a little, I might I make push up in your life, so. Unless Carly has something to back it up. <laughs> that You're on the Concord right. side, Carly. I'm, I'm always on the Concord side. I know the rap to Rhyme Nazareth and, and Hip Hop and Bottomist. Like, I like Tenacious I'm, D. I'm, I'm, what? Nothing. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mockery does not. Well, does not take you. I think points, points taken away from Tenacious D for Mockery. That's fine. I accept it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? still a compelling argument without me. Gordon made a great argument with Wonder Boy. I'm also going to say tribute. Yeah. That might end Great. it. So, alright. Audience, who is it? Tenacious D? Yeah. Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm calling it a tie. I think that was awesome. Can I, can I get this is one where we all win. Vanilla Ice. <laughs> yeah. so, I I have noticed an age difference in people who like Flight of the Concords versus people who like Tenacious D. Tenacious D is like, there's an era there that like, if you were 18 by the time, like... I was going to say, say what you're trying to say. Yeah, wait, know, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You old? <laughs> who, okay, Blair, I, I do, I I'm do. putting you on the spot. Who likes, who, who's the old one? Yeah. The one who likes D or the one that likes Concords? He's, he's older than him. As soon as I <laughs> change my old? diaper, you're getting a drop kick. <laughs> he is not old? <laughs> But I'm just saying. I, 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 I'm going to like both of them <laughs> Come quite on. a bit, and I am <laughs> definitely older than you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Edward loves Tenacious D, and he's five. <laughs> Edward loves Tenacious D. <laughs> Edward, do you love Tenacious D? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wait, push-ups? He loves Tenacious <laughs> Swift. That's who he likes. He's like, check um, what? Needs <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
I got another one. Oh, yes. Oh, I got... versus Vanilla Ice. No, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to change it. I'm going to do this one. All right. Yes. This one, I know one person who's going to vote one way, so you might be disqualified. Sam Beckett. Everyone know who that is? Sam Beckett from Quantum Leap? Yeah. We're... Seriously. <laughs> Yahoo Serious yeah. versus Weird Al. Ooh! Stop what I was doing! Yahoo Serious versus Weird Al. Who oh wins? My God. And I'm, I, you know what? I'm talking in a cage fighting. Who wins? Weird Al. Who, wi- Weird Who wins? Al. A is, is Yahoo. B is Weird Al. Yeah. Oh, I was so excited. It's going to be a landslide for Weird Al, isn't it? Yeah! Oh, Let's Yahoo hear serious. it. Let's hear it. Yahoo Serious. For the contrary. Yeah, They're like, fighting, though. This has nothing to do with songs or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's throw it here at top. He's buff. I'm remembering all the, all the, 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 what was it, the Einstein. Oh, my God, dude. Yahoo Carrot Top versus <laughs> Weird Al. Carrot Top. Whoa, Bonaduce versus oh Carrot Top. Do we have an answer? What do you guys say? <laughs> got to go with Weird Al. I mean, he's got longevity. Um, he's, he's got wit. Better hair. And, and Yahoo Serious is from Australia. And I he mean, did one movie. And who cares? And, and, he and Weird Al anymore. is my countryman. Yeah, I have to. You go. That was just my instinct jumping out. He's I'm Asian? Like, I remember that. <laughs> All right, let's do Weird Al. Mike conceded. Mike conceded. I had to. He conceded. That was you conceded. My, that was my instinct jumping out, being yeah, like, you I don't remember that freak. Yeah, but nobody can I nobody mean, can vote for Yahoo yeah. Serious. But Yahoo Serious versus Carrot Top, who's, who's cooler? Who's yeah, who's serious is cooler than Carrot Top. Oh, yeah. everybody, cool. everybody, everybody is cooler than, than uh, Carrot Top. Yeah, let's much. face it. I mean, Chairman of the Board was a pretty sweet movie. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yikes. Let's throw in Polly Shore now. Let's uh, name and names. Oh, uh, no. Okay, I was on one here. Sam Beckett from Quantum Leap. It's this show you haven't heard of. I've and heard of it. It's on Netflix. Versus... <laughs> oh, Scott Bakula. Oh, I know Scott Bakula. <laughs> Doctor Who. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sam Beckett versus Doctor Who. A is Sam Beckett. You're not going to get any Sam Beckett's for this one. B is Doctor Who. I don't watch Doctor Who. We got a Sam Beckett. Do you know Sam Beckett? Do you watch Quantum Leap? I did when I was a kid. All right. Yeah. But you don't watch Doctor Who, right? No, I don't watch Doctor Who at all, so I got to go with Bakula. Yeah, let's hear it. The back. He's got a beautiful head of hair. <laughs> he does. Um, Always comes back to that for you, Devin, doesn't it? The he tenth was... doctor, may I just say. He... No, I... beautiful head of hair. No, there's no me winning this argument against no, Doctor no. Who people. We... I'm just see... picking the side. You know what I would like to see, I though? I don't know Sam Beckett, so. Oh, wait. Ziggy? Ziggy versus what? Yeah, he's got Ziggy. His... So you're talking Ziggy you gotta give him versus Swiggy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Ziggy versus K9. No. Ziggy versus Clara. Go. I just came up with the Scott Bakula argument. All right. Never mind. All right. All right. Okay. Is it um, Dr. Who? Um, I, I would it? chime in with, I would give Ziggy the edge over Clara. Who wouldn't? It's it's Dean Stockwell. Um, but I would I would say as a see Mary the mob, he was also awesome gotta respect the leap because the leap had Scott Biakula in his hair, yep. the, the the comedy genius of Dean Stockwell yeah. and Ziggy. And Ziggy. Right. Uh, here's my so one I question. I gotta get though. props. I gotta get props. And Ziggy grew up. So you've had a lot of Doctor Who's years. over the years, correct? Mm-hmm. We've only had one Scott Bakula. Yes. Yeah. The consistency that is and beauty true. of the Scott Bakula oh. usurps you know Scott... the inconsistency across that. Okay. How many, like, you know, nine you know, or ten? New cage match, just, just on, on that theme. <laughs> Scott Bakula is Sam Who's Beckett this show? versus the... Scott Bakula is Archer on Enterprise. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Before, before we you get there. You mean he's there. Archer? Like, that's how you get ants, Archer? <laughs> Yeah. Archer, Archer the cartoon is terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Bakula's Archer. Who loves Archer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. I just have a quick dream to throw out before we go to the audience. Um, if they ever do do an American Doctor Who mm-hmm. attempt, don't say no. What if it was Scott Bakula? That would be amazing. Would that be great? 
Time vortex. How dare you? I'm correct. Okay, Doctor Who? Dr. Sam Beckett. Yeah! I think we know who won that one. All right. Scott Bakula. You should have moved with Kathy Ireland. You can't, can't beat it. All right. Yeah. I'm That's serving this one up, business. too. Best football movie ever. Sinbad. So good. I'm serving it. What, what was Sinbad in? Necessary Roughness. Yeah. You got no one against replacements. Okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw one in here. That, that is another different topic. We're not talking character, character. We're talking tabletop games versus video games. Oh. Yeah. Strong opinions. Yeah. Strong opinions. A is tabletop games. Yeah. B is video games. Is Twister considered a tabletop game? Yes. <laughs> you play it on the table. It is. Is Massage Twister considered a tabletop game? And what kind game? of Twister? <laughs> Right foot blue. Okay. A is tabletop. V is video game. There's no way Mike is not on this one versus a Lil. I, I don't. Okay, I didn't care that much. You didn't care that much? Carly, do you care a lot about this? I do. I do. Devin, do you care about video game? I care a lot about video games. Video game. You versus Mike. Go. All right. You you want you want to you can you you got a uh, first serve last time. Okay. So, so I got it. All right, so uh, I love them both dearly. They're both really important to me. Um, it just seems that nowadays, like, tabletop games are the new land party for me. When I was younger, we used to just go bring everybody's computers, play, like, you know, Unreal tournaments or whatever, and it was great, but it had its time. And now that tabletop games are showing up in America, because they really haven't hit these shores yet. It's still kind of Europe's game. Um, it's now that it's coming here, people are realizing that it's an awesome social experiment. People are getting to be talking one-on-one, -on -one, goofing around, having a good time. I'm also including Dungeons & Dragons in this, too. So, I mean, that raises the bar significantly. It's just a much more social, like, feel-good thing. Not that video games aren't. Not that video games aren't artwork, because they totally are. But I just like being able to sit down and hang out with my friends and converse and enjoy oh, metagaming on multiple levels. No, that open versatility is great. Yeah. I think that's one of the best parts about tabletop gaming. That being said, we can get the same character creation. We can get the same social response. Like, I, uh, you know, if you went to us, and a lot of us went to schools where you have people from all over the country, I can still game with all my old college buddies and stuff like that. Yeah. We can build our characters. We can build that out. We're also in a world right now where video games have been more accessible and more open than they ever have been. That's true. Um, we're breaking out in a new generation of what internet gaming is you know i think the world of warcrafts and a lot of our mmorpgs are taking some of the best parts of tabletop gaming yeah. but incorporating them with the tech giving us something that's a little more playable because i mean as me as a person it might just be that my imagination might be limited but there's a beautiful thing about seeing that dude cut off the orc's head instead of being like yo you described that really yeah, yeah. well man no, like, no, no. those ventricles got ripped out and it was awesome no, I'm down. But... it just depends on the type of dm you have because you do realize i'm wearing the dungeon master gear here right here oh i feel it, it depends on the descriptors i mean sometimes your dms do be soft and it's just broken or it's <laughs> yeah. bethesda and there's so many bugs in yeah, it yeah. and it's terrible but and it's true, and it, like, I agree with you on a lot of that. It just, um, it's like, for instance, playing like uh, Dungeons wow, & Dragons over like Google Play. Play. Something like that. It's a lot tougher. <laughs> also, there's a tactile sensation to the games that sort of puts you in the, in the feeling of like, all right, I'm here, I'm present. I'm not actually typing keys. I'm actually rolling dice and being right. here. And it does something for your psychology. Absolutely. Rolling dice, I'll, you can't I'll, recreate that. You cannot recreate rolling dice. Yeah. It doesn't what about aiming something and shooting it what? in real time and seeing it explode and all this, like having that what visceral if, instant reaction? What? Not everybody oh, engaged Mario. in that same reaction. <laughs> Mario. As you I like <laughs> Mario. <laughs> you can be Super Mario and explore the galaxy. That's true. All right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to end this one. You guys can continue it out in the parking lot. <laughs> uh, play I, Carly. I, I, I want to I wanna chime in a little bit with actually, like, you know, being able to see something in a video game and being able to shoot yes. at it. I think tabletop is cool because um, you can actually use your imagination in it. You're not given everything. You can, kinda, okay. you can think about it, and you can get creative. And I feel like that's a little bit lost in video games where it's okay. just you're given everything you need. So. I think how much <laughs> nonlinear gaming has taken off has been, like, the biggest... 
I would have completely agreed with you had nonlinear gaming not been the thing right now. In that we have open worlds and we can create our own story. That's the best part of Dungeons and Dragons. That's the best part of tabletop. But we actually have someone who's a really good story writer taking over. Yeah, Seven Up Spot was awesome too. All right, <laughs> video game versus tabletop. Video game. <laughs> tabletop. <laughs> Somebody popped the champagne. That's amazing. I like Mario. All right. I think, yes. No, we actually had a better one. Archer versus, Archer, the TV show, you got ants. That's how you can ants. Versus James Bond. No? You want it versus Family Guy? Do you want, you want James Bond. Archer versus James Bond. A is Archer, B is James Bond. You I can't, I'm and not you. deciding. I can't decide this. Carly, They're so Chris. Different. You watch the action and then you watch Archer, the DVD, for the deleted scenes that are amazing. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like Archer would just like use his wit to, <laughs> to defeat uh, Bond. Yeah. And then I, I also feel like it would be a thing where like Bond is winning the entire time, but then at the end somehow like Archer ants. went he gets ants. Yeah. He does. <laughs> it's all about the ants. I, I, I think, think Archer is a fantastic show with car, you know the cartoon and all that stuff. But it's Sean freaking Connery. That's all I I mean. Yeah. Well I mean, wait, but that's an interesting question. Which Bond? Uh, Timothy oh. Timothy Dalton. Tim, Timothy Dalton was not bad. I like Timothy Dalton. That's not bad. I liked him too. There, I mean, um, even Roger Moore was okay for the time. I, I, I mean, if you look at the concept of the show, I think Archer is. Go ahead. Um, personally, I think Archer would just annoy James Bond no matter what the actor, except maybe Daniel Craig. I think Daniel Craig would get annoyed enough and punch him in the face. Hopefully. But I think I think Archer would win simply on annoyingness alone. George, but, but it's a it, it, it's a different. I mean, he's a spy who's a a, a jerk. I don't think Sean Connery is that. I think Archer's just I think the most annoying twit on the planet. So it should have been Austin yeah. Powers. Austin, it could have been Austin Powers. Yeah. Archer Archer also has the danger zone on his side. <laughs> the danger zone. Yes. The highway to the yes. Okay. He's got I'll, Lana I'll too. What? He's got Lana too. He does have and Lana. And Diggle. I'm sorry. Diggle Bond has money, Penny. Yeah. Money, Penny. All right, and James Bond and or Archer? Let's hear it. James Bond? <gasps> oh, Archer? <laughs> wow. Everybody loves the raunchiness. Yep. Which I do. Which I do. <laughs> All right. Does anyone have a cage match or I'm going to keep going to my list? I'm going to my list. Okay, this one is, this one is timely. This one is timely. Flash versus Arrow. Flash A, not not you, a little stop flashing. B arrow. Yeah. Ow! Ow! Flash A B arrow. Flash A. That's not confidence. Can anybody argue arrow? We should have done A for arrow. That's why I'm getting tripped up here. <laughs> Man, like if we did B for apple, that's gonna really screw me up. Nobody can. Yours isn't strong, I can tell. All right, keep it to yourself. All right, so obviously Flash wins, right? Audience, Arrow or Flash? Arrow? Flash. Flash wins. Daredevil. Oh, oh no! Daredevil or Flash? Oh, A is Daredevil, B is Flash. Flash, still. A is Daredevil, B is Flash, hold him up. A is Daredevil, B is Flash. <laughs> Flash, Daredevil, you two, at it. Yeah. Flash can run away if he needs to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are we talking about a show? So, but it's kind of his thing sometimes. <laughs> the Kingpin would kill the Flash. Ma no, no. Matt Murdock <laughs> has the hearing, and he'd know to th where to throw something and trip the Flash, there breaking go. bones, and then going exactly. and pummeling. Matt Murdock is a blind ninja. Can you tell I kind of like Daredevil? <laughs> He's blinja. not magical. He's a blinja. He's a blind blinja. Blind ninja. He can't win. He can't win against a blinja. That's you ever see Zodiac or whatever, that, the blind warrior? Hashtag blinja. Win. Hashtag blinja. And, and uh, uh, Rutger Hauer played Zodiac in something. 
Blind Ninja, that wins every time. <laughs> Rutger Hauer. That's right. That's right. Molly, you like Rutger Hauer? But, but okay, wait. She's ignoring me. I think she just flipped me off. Yeah, exactly. And Daredevil's a lawyer. Yeah, he would sue. <laughs> All right, audience. Daredevil, or who did we say? Flash. Flash. Daredevil? Oh, yeah! Flash? Okay, how many, how many of you don't have Netflix? Come on. I can't tell, because the Flash ones screamed a little louder and higher, but I don't know if there were more. Doctor oh, Who. Doctor Who won. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I thought that one was going to be a tougher fight. Um, I mean, there's no other one. Okay, nerds. Picard or Kirk? We have to do it. We have to do it. We've never done that in a cage match. And then we're going to make them fight. In a cage. We didn't do it, did we? Whoa. A couple weeks ago. We did. <laughs> did we do it a couple weeks ago? Did we do it last night? Maybe. Me versus my brain. Um, okay, Picard, A. Kirk, B. Picard, A. Kirk, B. Jean-Luc. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, audience. Is it Picard or Kirk? Picard? Professor Charles Xavier. Um, you know what? I could have picked you out of the crowd as a Sit down back there. I'm with you, man. If I may interject for a second, I think in this case the winner would be Benjamin Sisko. Greatest Starfleet captain ever. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I got to take any victory for what about one that I can get, so Picard all the way. Benjamin Button versus Benjamin Sisko. <laughs> Wait a minute, I do have one. Benjamin Button when he's the little one versus little cap. Voldemort when he's the peanut <laughs> under the bus seat. <laughs> yeah. Versus Mini Me. <laughs> versus Mini Me. Ah, Mini Me. Versus All right. Steve Rogers when he was before. Yeah. All right. It's a very tiny who, cage. Who, who votes? This is yes. this is a cage match in a Blanco hamster cage. Total recall. So <laughs> Who, who wins in the hamster cage? It's, it's beef jerky Voldemort versus shriveled up Benjamin Button versus mini me. So A is, is beef jerky, B is shriveled Benjamin, <laughs> and C is mini me. Oh my god. If you got a C, just hold up the gangster sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you guys I have? Don't know. <laughs> Wow. Mini Me clearly won. It's always Voldemort. Harry Potter rules. So Voldemort A, B is Benjamin Button. Oh, I'd like to see that Harry fight. Potter. And, <laughs> and C is Voldemort. Okay, you three argue it out. Although, wait, you're, you're agreeing with them. No, who, I went, who, no, I went to A because the tiny Alan Rickman is no, just... No, no. Not no Alan Rickman. Oh, the other one. Oh, You have more brain damage. They're not going to let you out of here alive. Get we were right. Right. So you say Voldemort. Anyone yeah. say Benjamin Button? Voldemort. All right. Mini Me versus Button. Voldemort. Go. Wait. I don't know. Are you, I'm Voldemort. You're Mini Me? No, I'm not Mini Me. No, I'm not Mini Me. You see how big I am? Am I a Mini Me? <laughs> Edward is <laughs> a Lil's Mini Me. Actually, Mike kind of looks like his Mini Me if you shave your head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Go ahead. I don't. I don't have a particularly strong argument, except that Mini Me was like my favorite part of the Austin Powers movies. So he's enjoyable, favorite. and I think he also kicks a little butt here and there. Kicks a little butt, right? Um. I don't think that's solid. That's not I'll a strong argument. It. It's a terrible yeah. argument. Yeah. My argument, terrible. argument is because magic. Yeah, a, a wizard did it. Trumps it every time. You're talking to the bona fide DM here. I know. Yeah. Rocks answer. fall, everyone dies. Yeah. And I'm going to take the counterpoint. Benjamin Button wins, and I'll tell you why. Because Brad Pitt. he is weak, and he is Brad Pitt, and he is all shriveled up. And Brad but Voldemort, by the time he is the beef jerky yeah. under that seat, he's got nothing left. No, but he has. And he Benjamin has the Button, whole... to gain his strength, would chew on him and gain his strength back. <laughs> Mini me is not even this a factor. Is, this is gone. Because he's too busy peeing in the corner. Go who, ahead. Who would chew on Voldemort? 
Uh, Benjamin, would Button. Be Benjamin Button. So is Benjamin Button like a he Wendigo wins. now? He wins. <laughs> He's the Wendigo, yes. He's a Wendigo. Who's also an Alpha Flight, uh, let me just tell you that. That is true, Alpha Flight. All right, so is it Benjamin Button? Yeah. Nobody's paying yeah. attention. Yeah. 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 Or Pitt? <laughs> is it Voldemort, Beef Jerky Voldemort? <laughs> is it Mini Me? That was the That's worst cage matter. match ever. But they're fighting to death in a hamster cage. Just get the visual in your head. It's because you didn't put Quato from Total Recall in it. Oh, my oh. gosh. That was, he said Qua- it first. I didn't hear it. Oh He's been screaming at That's what I was trying to say. I heard it over there. A lil is like an auditory eclipse. I couldn't hear it through him. Um, so, okay. Voldemort versus Quato. Clatu, 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 that's from Evil Dead, Clatu, yes. Clatu, <laughs> Nick Two. Yes, come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change mine for that because I'm gonna go Clatu. Clatu. Yeah. Okay, audience, Clatu yeah. from you know, yeah. get your ass to Mars versus who's it? Beef Jerky Voldemort. Yeah. Beef Jerky Voldemort. Clatu. Yeah. yeah. Clatu wins. <laughs> What was that? You. you. Can't, you can't get anybody's I thought, I thought English there was saying something. What did you want? This is Steve Southgate. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting one. All right. Good part. <laughs> this one is for your video game nerds. Mittens, mit, mittens versus the mit, gloves. <laughs> the minions from Despicable Me, are they better or the clan... The Barbarians from Clash of Clans. <laughs> See, I knew Mike would have an opinion. All right, A, A, is, the cla- A is the Minions, B is the Clash of Clans. I don't know what the Clash of Clans is. I'm gonna, I, have an, I have an alternate oh, answer. Yeah. What is it? Okay, my answer is that realistically, the Barbarians <laughs> would win, but with audience love, the We're, Minions would win. Because that's not adorable. an alternate answer. That's, that's just an no, answer. No, it's a neutral party. It's a. It's a. It's that's just an answer. answer. <laughs> Disqualified. I have so you both said do, said minions. I almost said dominions. Both said minions. No, no, no I'm a neutral party because it, it's it's case Ooh. sensitive. Let's hear. I, I want to hear Gordon's <laughs> argument for the minions. <laughs> I won't be Switzerland. I want to hear Gordon's argument for the minions. To let minion. Because once barbarians die, they're dead. But minions just keep coming and coming. And they're more lovable than barbarians. Wait, I and one of them is named Steve, and one is named Kevin. Also, I, minions are pay to play. I do have one to throw in. What about the penguins from Madagascar? <laughs> the penguins. Oh. The penguins from Madagascar. Versus the minions. Versus the oh, minions. Oh boy, it's a DreamWorks cage match. <laughs> All right. I'm do you guys have opinions on it, or should I go to the audience? Is it a dance-off, or actually a battle to yeah, the right, death? Right. The penguins from Madagascar versus the minions from Despicable Me. Penguins? Woo! 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 Who did I say? Minions. Yeah! Minions win. I think I might have said minions twice. <laughs> no, you said penguins. All right. Are, we, are, are we done, penguins. or do you guys have one more? We can we do have, one more. We have five minutes. Oh, wait. What was your one? You have a good one. What, my Nathan Fillion one? Yes. Uh, Nathan Fillion. You guys are familiar with him? Yeah. <laughs> versus Bruce Campbell. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's mine. Yep. <laughs> yep. B for Bruce, because I love Bruce. A oh. for Nathan, Bruce. B for Bruce. We made it easier that time, so I'd remember. Oh, yes. Well... Clearly, Blair has to go in on this one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say Gordon, but we're gonna do a double cage match. Oh, Alil and Mike have to join in too. Okay, right. wait, who's who? Who's who? I don't know. I so start <laughs> talking, Bruce. Bruce start talking, I, I'm Nathan, Nathan. I'm Nathan Fillion. You're Nathan. Okay, you. Do you like versus Nathan? Harrison Ford? <laughs> okay, okay, first Bruce, off, uh, Bruce Campbell pioneered the whole guy with a chainsaw at the end of his. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That he's, yeah. That's an argument. He's also the been. He's also played Elvis. Yeah. Um, in one of the greatest movies ever. Yes, Bubba yes. Hotep. Um, and they're doing a sequel. Actually, and oh. he's also. He's got the kind of self-deprecatory wit 
that Nathan Fillion aspires to. Nathan <laughs> Fillion's on, only thing he's, he has going for him is that he happened to show star in a show that got canceled by an idiot network. I disagree. All right. About Nathan Bring Fillion. it, Blair. Nathan Fillion saved the world from the Slither monsters in Slither. Slither was amazing. That's the movie that... Still the, not Ash. Yeah. <laughs> he Plastic was Russia. able to beat them with guns and with, what are those, uh, grenades. <laughs> and, and his wit, even though they craved human flesh and meat, he was one of the lone survivors at the end of that story. And also, he was my captain. He was... You know, he's Captain Tight Pants. Yeah, but I love but, Captain but Tight Bruce Pants. Campbell, Bruce Campbell, again, Elvis and Bubba Hotep, greatest movie you have not seen. Go, go rent it and Bubba watch Hotep it. Bubba Hotep is awesome. Bubba Hotep is awesome. He was, you know, he was in in uh, two of the best Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man and Spider-Man Two. He's the only character he to in beat Spider-Man Three as well. And he's the only character notice. to beat. We don't Spider-Man. talk Spider-Man we don't, yeah, Three. We don't talk, I will we talk about the pie so being so good. Spider-Man. Yeah. But, Spider-Man. All right. Well, All right. You guys got Elil and Mike. You have things to say. Uh, Bruce Bruce Campbell cut off his own arm or his own hand, <laughs> and he was attacked by many versions of himself. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, you he saved the world by going and getting the Book of the Dead. That's true. That's true. I mean, and he said that he said it wrong, but he's still awesome. <laughs> and then if you watch the alternate ending of Army of Darkness, he sleeps through time. Wait, wait she makes a good point. He also may have condemned the world. So, yeah, right. But, right. but we we adorably him. so. But he, he was Jack did. of all trades. Yeah. He was Sam X. He was Briscoe County Jr. Briscoe County Jr. Oh. <laughs> He's also he on Burn Notice. He sat next to me in a That's worth points. Oh. He's also on Burn Notice. Oh, yeah, see, if you look at the Bruce Campbell catalog, it's diverse. What do you have with Nathan Fillion? You've got Firefly. You've got One Life to Live back in the day. You got and Desperate Castle. You got Desperate Housewives and Waitress and Slither. He's, he, he was also on Buffy. Uh, He's Caleb and Buffy. Doctor he Horrible. Uh oh, uh oh. I think the Buffy factor Captain is what's really tipping it over Come there. on, here's the thing about Nathan Fillion though, because you were talking about Bruce Campbell and like his his self-deprecating humor sort of. Nathan Fillion does that with. Captain Hammer, because he's sort of like jabbing himself as he's as he's that character. But the other thing is, he volunteered to play Nathan Drake on the Uncharted, uh, the the movie coming out for Uncharted, and they chose not to. And he would have been perfect for it. But all right, no. we we have a third party What's yeah, third interrupting party? us. The kitchen but, says if Nathan Fillion's wins, they're shutting the kitchen down. <laughs> All right, audience. That's an unfair argument. This Bruce is going to tell us whether we have food. Um, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Be loud. Bruce Campbell. Yeah! I knew I wasn't going to win that one. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Bruce Campbell. I mean, uh, all, the, all the notes came from Bob. And, and just, a remind, tap. just a reminder, Dog. folks, Bruce Campbell is not only the best dancer, Bruce Campbell is the only answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right, I that's it. We have completed another Geektastic Cage match. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Geek Bar. This has been a blast. Uh, check us out at southgatemediagroup.com. And this will, this podcast will be posted there. Just look up Live at Geek Bar, Geektastic, Geektastic Cage Match. It'll be there. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you. Good night.